Bow hunting success is typically determined by three key factors. Patience, recognizing the opportunity, and confident, accurate arrow placement. These video scenes were filmed at my Tom Miranda African Safari camps, and the animals taken were by actual clients or by me personally. Because of the arid nature of South Africa's northern province, animals will typically drink either mid-morning or mid-afternoon. These windows of time are when most of the opportunities will occur and many species will visit. One of the most important concepts in bow hunting Africa is knowing that seeing any animal at the waterhole isn't a guarantee that you'll see the same animal again ever. There are always other watering areas, spring seeps, creeks, and waterholes woven over the huge expanse of an African concession. Also, winds change and hunters rotate to different blinds and stands, which means a hunter may sit only once at a location. Therefore, it's important to decide early in the encounter if an animal is a shooter. Staying alert on stand is always a must. The sooner a hunter recognizes animal activity near the set, the more time there will be to get ready. One of the keys to success in shooting accurately is going through the motions of what's required on stand when it comes to getting ready to close the deal. I recommend that every hunter practices these movements, slowly taking the bow, positioning the form, watching the animal's body language, learning the distances, and preparing to draw, or even actually drawing on animals as encounters unfold. This rehearsal can make a huge difference toward the success when the shooter buck bull or ram appears. The best bow hunters rehearse these movements and I personally draw on many of the animals that come into the kill zone when I am on stand as this is the perfect practice for the real deal. This repetition helps a hunter to know the variables of noise in the blind, movement, and what these animals can and cannot hear or see. Angles are also important, as sometimes the opportunity may only come behind the stand or at a tough angle in relationship to the blind's shooting window. These variables will test the best bow hunter's shooting form and accuracy. These pre-shot rehearsals also allow a hunter to watch animals' reactions to the sounds, smells, and movements within the set. Will the sound of an arrow moving across the rest alert close animals? Will soft whispering alert them? It depends on factors like still or windy conditions, waterhole activity, interference animals. Are animals alert to the movements or shadows in the set? Well, if they are, it could be the sun's position or the size of the opening in a hide or blind. Typically in Africa, scent isn't an issue because if the wind's wrong, the animals likely won't come in at all which means if you're not seeing game, it's time to move location. Because a waterhole, salt lick, or feeding station is a busy place, and animals are more susceptible to predation in these areas. Allowing animals time to come in and get relaxed can help limit string jumping on a shot. And once animals come in, drink, and go successfully, the mood and manners of the game will relax at the waterhole. An example is if there's kudu cows at the waterhole drinking calmly, the bull will most likely approach and drink calmly. Or if a baboon's drinking, other animals will also come to drink when the baboon leaves. As animals know, baboons are very cautious and their presence at the waterhole is a fear eliminator. Whether you're hunting deer, bear, or elk in North America, or African game at my bow camp, the animal's body position at the time of the arrow release determines the aim point. In archery, arrows kill because of the broadhead blades cut organs, arteries, and veins that allow for an immediate and massive blood loss. This means that archers must think in terms of three dimensions on the animal and understand that whatever angle the animal's standing, the arrow must pass through the lungs, heart, and other essential organs. Thus, when aiming at the animal, envision where the arrow will exit as it passes through the chest cavity. On a quartering away angle, which can mean the broadhead is entering back or behind the ribs and angling forward. Broadside shots are less tricky, and in Africa, aiming tight to the crease or even straight up the front leg will ensure maximum broadhead exposure to critical organs. Quartering toward shots aren't recommended. 
However, if taken, a hunter needs to keep skeletal structure in mind, as bone will deflect or stop penetration. All of the animal hits in this video were recovered, so the arrow placements used here are what a bow hunter should try to attain. Because string jumping modifies the angle and position of the animal's body before arrow impact, I recommend shots under 30 yards only when hunting in Africa. Here's some more advice. On a trip to Africa, remember that each mature buck, bull, or ram that comes into the set is a potential target. I have sat thousands of hours on stand in Africa and can tell you that 90% of the opportunities only come once. If a huge water buck bull comes in relaxed and drinks, offering you the perfect shot, it will be a lost opportunity if you don't take him. Because I'll bet you likely won't have this exact same scenario happen again for many days or even many trips, because there are no guarantees in wild African bow hunting. A huge key to success is also the fact of getting an animal on the ground as quickly as you can in your hunt, as this will set the stage for your entire trip. The first morning, or at least the very first day, if you can get an animal in the salt, your confidence will be higher and the proverbial monkey will be off your back. This is a trick that's used by many successful people. Think of it this way. If you're a major league pitcher, getting that first batter out is key to a successful inning. Or if you're a batter, getting on base your first time at bat sets the stage for your game performance. Traveling to hunt is no different. On a trip like this, you have limited days, limited time, and no control of the weather, no control of the animals, or knowledge of the best locations to sit. In other words, don't leave anything to chance, because a bird in the hand is always worth two in the bush. I've seen hunters pass animal after animal, only to get to camp that evening and wish they would have shot. And then there's that hope that tomorrow, the same animal will come in the same way and there will be another chance. Well, it almost never happens. I speak from stubborn experience. I was hunting the Limpopo bushbuck in 2005 and had a huge common diker walk in just before dark. I passed him. Well, passing that diker was a huge mistake as I never had another chance to shoot a diker for the next 20 plus trips to Africa. Today I have two common dikers and neither are half the size of the one I let go. On another occasion, I passed a blessed buck that I should have shot. I went on many blessed buck hunts and amazingly, the blessed buck ended up being my final species for the Safari Club International Animals of Africa milestone. This is why on traveling hunts, a bow hunter must learn to capitalize on opportunity. Beautiful Don't let a golden buck. opportunity pass you by when you're hunting in Africa. Here's another factor. If you have a mature shooter ram, bull, or buck at 10 yards in front of you, relaxed and unsuspecting, and you let him walk, Murphy's Law states that the next time you have that opportunity, the conditions will be different. Low light, a skittish animal, bad angle. There's a hundred things that can make the shot difficult, things that could go wrong. Just the pressure of everyone else in camp that's taken game and you haven't. This is added stress, and stress equals mistakes. It's best to be the first hunter to score in camp. The point I'm trying to make is to take the easy shots when they're presented, get an animal or two in the salt, and then concentrate on being more selective. Here's a final thought. Expert bow hunting comes from chair time. Spending huge amounts of time on stand with animals close and rehearsing for that first good shot opportunity is essential. Confidence in your shooting ability comes from repetition and practice and actually shooting animals in adrenaline charged situations. A hunter doesn't get this kind of experience by passing game and waiting only for the perfect broadside shot at 15 yards. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm Tom Miranda, and here's to your bow hunting success.